All right, cool, we're in. Every time we start the plasma table, we have to do what's called a datum. So this, this torch will come up here to the front left corner and it's basically aligning everything correctly so that this thing will cut properly. So uh, that's what we're about to do and it's a one simple click right here. It's a button that's already on the software. I just hit datum. It adjusted the uh, Y position and now it's adjusting the, uh, the X position. If you know anything about CNC, X, Y, Z is uh, the three different axes that, that these machines run on. X is forward and backwards, Y is left and right, and then Z is up and down. I think it's coming to the very front of the table and it's basically saying, hey, all right, this is our start point. Because we need to replace one of the consumables here. Now my plasma cutting machine itself the thing that powers the cutting machine, this box right here. The breaker is off, so it is. I don't have to worry about getting electrocuted or uh, getting burnt by any means. So I can safely work on this. This little orange wire right here, this wire um, is, a, is a sensor wire. There's an ohmic sensing wire. It detects resistance between the electricity in this cap and the material, it, it detects the resistance measured in ohms. And so that's, that wire is the sensor, which, what, which is what tells the computer how high off of the material that the nozzle is. So it's constantly detecting the, the voltage resistance between the material and the nozzle. So this, this machine is designed so that if there's any warpage happening live, in the material as it's cutting, it will actually maintain the exact same distance away from the material as it moves along. So if the sheet metal starts warping, the nozzle will actually start raising with the sheet metal and coming down with the sheet metal. And so that's a really cool feature. We have to always make sure that that thing is working in order for this torch nozzle to not run into the material. This is the head of the plasma torch. Okay, this is the head of this plasma torch right here. Uh, this is the end cap here. This end cap, it's got a crazy looking deformed hole there. That's after uh, being used after a certain amount of time, uh, that's what starts to happen. And uh, sometimes you need to replace it with a new one like this right here, nice shiny. It'll give it a nice good connection, okay? So we're replacing that right now. So the first thing on this head that we do is you put, screw the cap on like that, okay? And next, there are a few pieces on the inside. This is your electrode, okay? So this is what, where the electricity actually comes out of. And these things get worn down over time. And uh, this little center hole right there is where the electricity comes from and sometimes the arc will actually bore that out and kind of destroy the end of this. Now this one seems to be still okay. Um, this one is still in decent it's not shape. Not quite needing to be replaced yet, but we can still use this one. But I'll show you the difference between this one and a new one. All right, you can see that that edge on the end is very nice and flat. And you see that little, that little speck in the center. That's where the electricity comes from. Okay, and this, you just basically push this up into the, uh, into the plasma torch right here. So side by side, you can kind of see the difference. So these go bad regularly. Um, they do take a little while before they need to be replaced, but so we're gonna still use this one because this one is still good. And this is called the nozzle. After too much use, that little hole will get bored out just like the cap. So that's an old one. This is what a new one looks like. Side by side, that's what they look like. So this is the new one, this is the old one. This one, over time, could get bored out, but I think this one's still good. I don't think this needs to be replaced yet. Okay, so we're still gonna use this one. And on the back, there's like an airflow nozzle that goes over top of this, just like these. Okay, this piece goes in there like that. And then this piece gets screwed up onto the plasma, the plasma torch right here. Okay, and this little clip right here 
is where that little orange wire, this little orange wire right here clips onto. So we're gonna go ahead and put the electrode back up into the torch. You just push it up and it will seat itself inside. And then we, we got this all set up correctly. We drop it down in. Push it up in here and screw it all in together. Put this ohmic sensing wire back on and we're good to go. I've moved the torch to this corner of the material and uh, what I'm basically doing is I'm, I'm setting what's called program zero. Program zero essentially just tells the computer, hey, or the front left-hand corner of the material is exactly right here on the XY uh, axis. And so it will upload my file and it will readjust where my file is located on the table. So now when I hit run, it basically knows exactly where to cut. So that's what's going on right now. I just set program zero and ready to fire it up, boys. So I can, now I can safely turn my, my uh, plasma cutting machine on because I'm not gonna be sticking my hand under here anymore. So I'm gonna turn my plasma cutting machine on, let it run through uh, error cycles. Let's just put this in dry run mode and let's just run the square and make sure that it's gonna run exactly where we need. So it is not gonna fire up, or at least it shouldn't. Okay, comes down, touches the material to make sure that the material is there. Now it's doing the exact path of what it's gonna do when I decide to actually make the cut. So this is called dry run mode, where it will dry run the cut without actually firing up the plasma table. Make sure that we're not gonna jog off the end of the piece of our material here, which we're not, so this is perfect. In this case, I know that my material is bigger than what I'm trying to cut, so I don't have to really worry about it, but it's always nice to do a test cut, dry run. All right, beautiful. All right, so now we're gonna put it in active run mode and we're gonna actually cut it right now. Beautiful. Nice. Awesome. All right. All right, 18 inches by 16 inches. Nice, we're there. Wow, very nice. I love getting new consumables because the actual cut uh, the actual cut comes out perfect when, uh, when we got fresh consumables, so I love changing out the consumables.